Today I'm participating in the Patriotic Challenge hosted by Teresa B. DIY, co-hosted by Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs. Details coming up. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. Welcome and welcome back. We're going to start with a pizza pan from Dollar Tree, some flat 2x paint, a glue stick, some ribbon, and a calendar page from Dollar Tree's calendars. We're going to start by removing and cleaning up this pan, take off any glue and residue, and we're going to take the oils and dirt off of it by using this alcohol. I just got 70% and I use it to clean my projects to get them nice and clean. Then I'm going to use this wreath form that fits nicely on the inside to determine the size of my page. So while my pan is drying, I am going to start tracing and trimming up my paper. I did give that one coat on that pan that's outside drying. I'm going to cut just to the outside of this line just to give me a little more area to glue down and make it a little bit larger. Be sure you make it easy on yourself by turning that page while you are cutting. Now here's the pan. This is how it looks just by covering the edges. That's the only part that's going to show. I'm looking now to see where I need to put my glue. And it is a colored glue that dries clear, so it makes it very easy to use and um, know where you're lacking if you don't get enough coverage. So be sure you don't leave any lumps or bumps in there. You want this to be nice and smooth. So I'm just going to lay it there for a moment, get out my ruler, this came from Dollar Tree, and just measure to try to get it as close to center as possible. I'm going to pat that out and rub it out from the center outward. And then if you have any little bubbles that still remain, you can take a little needle, poke it in there above that bubble, and it will just press right out. It's a good little tip. If there's any little bumps and chips in your paint or places you missed, just go back over with a chalk pen or with a chalk marker or a white marker. A little bit of matte Mod Podge, go over the top. It's gonna keep it weatherproof. It's gonna keep that paper in place too. So now we're going to look at our ribbons and decide what we want to do. These are thrifted and the white one on top came from my wonderfully generous neighbor. So I'm going to take this ribbon and start to work. In the meantime, I wanted to let you know that this red, white, and blue DIY is an open challenge and it is hosted by Teresa and Sammy. It's a patriotic challenge to help out the Fisher House and I will have their Links below in the description box. Please, please go over there and check out their videos. Okay, so I am just measuring out 24 inches of the blue, 24 inches of this ruffled white. And I thought that this blue and white would be so pretty layered on top of this ruffle ribbon. And since it's flat in the center, it's gonna make it very easy to do. I'm just going to make a little squiggly light line of glue down the center so that we can Put this blue and white polka dot ribbon right on top. If you make a long thin line down the center, you may have a little bleed through and it's going to make your ribbon look a little darker. Um, so just do this you know, however you want, but this is what I do and it keeps it from showing and it's a little bit better coverage. You're just going to press that down as you go, working in little sections so that your glue doesn't dry too quickly because then it's not going to stick. Okay, all the way down. And then we're going to look at this checked wired ribbon. Going to trim that off at 24 inches. And start considering what type of uh, bow you want to make. This is a very simple bow that I've made here. I think it looks good with the simple print from the calendar page, the artwork that we're using. So this is what I chose to use, but you put anything you want. If you like something with a little more sparkle and shine, as Miss Olivia would say, then certainly do something bigger. Go for something bigger. Get out your bow makers, make something fabulous. But for me, the simplicity of this works well with my decor. I have kind of a cottagey, rustic farmhouse decor, and this works for me. 
So we've layered two of the red and white checkered and then the layered bow on top of that. I'm dovetailing the ends now. I'm just gonna cut the polka dot bows on a slant, the tails on a slant. And then we're not gonna need that chenille hanger, so we're gonna clip that off too. Thank you, thank you so much to all of our patriots, to all of our people who have served in the armed forces, the military. You can't, words can't thank you enough for the sacrifices that you and your families have made and it means so much for us to be able to celebrate the day with you and give you recognition for all the wonderful things that you've done. So God bless you and thank you for your sacrifices. All right, so now we're going to fluff our bow up a little bit. Make sure everything looks good. You can certainly make the back bow a little bigger if you'd like, or you can make it, you know, however you want to make it. So we're not going to need this wire. We're going to cut these off. I love my little pliers. It's a great tool to have. I use them almost every project. Then I'm going to pick out some florals and some greenery and stack those in there together. It makes it convenient that those can be divided and placed together like that. Or we can do it on the bottom and this is where I want mine to be. So now you have to consider that it's rather difficult to glue anything down to a piece of metal. So I'm going to use this and it's going to be just, it's just a little scrap of foam. I'm just going to put a good bit of hot glue. It's going to overlap onto the paper and onto the pan. Hopefully it will stay a little, some more, a little more securely there. I did use Gorilla Glue Stick. So, um, and by the way, this was done a while back and it's still standing. So that's a good thing. Just gonna divide the flowers up here and add my bow with a little hot glue. And then I'm gonna add some more greenery. It looked like it needed a bit more And I've added boxwood and I've added these little pieces of eucalyptus as well. We always have a celebration, or we have for several years now, at our house for the 4th of July. We have a big yard and a big piece of property where we can do fireworks and the kids can run. And it's just a lot of fun. So I love to decorate for Independence Day. Okay, so you see how I just wrap that around the pencil to make a curl in it. Kind of reminds me of fireworks so I'm putting these down in here maybe sparklers They're very festive just adding them in there and then I'm gonna add a little more red and white I want to make this a little bit bulkier without adding any more greenery so I'm just gonna cut about six inches here of a couple of pieces of this and fold it over and give it a little dovetail So speaking of things I'm thankful for, I am so very thankful that everyone's health seems to getting, be getting back to normal, that families are able to meet up now, um, doors are starting to open for families, and that, you know, I'll be able to see my family this year. It's very exciting to be able to do that and, and give all those hugs that we've missed at the last couple of celebrations. It's good to be getting back on track, I think. I pray that that's what's happening. So we're going to wrap these little pieces of pipe cleaner scraps around the tails in the center and just press those down into that foam. Now I'm going to give you two options for a hanger for this pan. You can use a piece of wide ribbon and just roll it in, just like so. Just double it over. This is very easy. Um, don't worry, I'm not squishing my flowers. They're hanging off the edge of the table. You just add a good bit of that good glue, a little more glue, a little scrap, and trim it up. And this would be a very simple way to do it if you want to do it this way. However, if you have beads, like I do, you can certainly step it up just a little bit. So I'm going to start by taking just a length of jute, whatever, I think I probably have maybe 14 inches or so, 
and I'm going to do a double knot. I'm tying the knot on top of itself to make sure that it doesn't slip out of the beads. And I'm just going to feed that bead down. Now you see the trouble I'm having there getting the bead on? Same here. Now let me show you what you can do to make that stop happening. So you add a little bit of hot glue on the end and you twist it in the way that it's already twisted. Just go with it. Protect your fingers. Cut off any little extra. And then now you have a little needle, essentially, that will go right through every bead. It will make it short work. Very easy project to do this way. I've heard others say you could use a tape or a certain type of a needle, but this works for me because it's convenient and it's right there where I'm at. Now, see, I did skip my pattern, but I fixed it. Don't worry. I discovered the problem. Same thing on this end, we're just going to double that knot up on itself. See, I haven't fixed it yet, but it, it will be fixed. I did discover it a little bit late, but I got it. A little bit of glue over the ends here, and then you can trim off whatever is left. And here you go. Thank you so much for watching. See the links below. And I'll see you again really soon. Bye.